Welcome to another ultralight airplane design video from the ultralight airplane workshop. This is part two of a three part series that I'm doing on building a mock up of the fuselage frame for the UWS 4 ultralight airplane. In this video, we're mostly going to do a time lapse of building the mock up, at least most of the mock up, the frame part. I'm going to add a few more parts to it though. I'm going to add a seat, I'm going to add a dashboard, and I'm going to add a seat belt harness. But I'll do those off camera. They're really not that interesting. Well, the seat might be. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the third part of the video. But if you haven't seen part one yet, I'll put a link up in the upper right hand corner that you can click that will take you to that video and it'll do an explanation of what we're going to see in this video. At the end of this video, I'm going to do a little analysis, a few changes that I would have made to the frame if I thought about it a little bit more before I started building it. And then we'll talk about what we're going to do in part three. Let's get to it.
Well, that's the basic frame construction for this mock-up. And remember, this wooden frame is supposed to represent a metal tubing frame. So a lot of the layout that I used, the configuration, was intended to be used with steel tubing. So we're doing welding in that case, and we're using round tubes. So there's a little bit of a compromise when trying to use these square wood sticks and gussets when it's really intended to be used with welded steel round tubing. If I had designed this fuselage to be wooden fuselage, I would have done a lot different. But there's some analogs between the wood and the steel. For example, you saw me using hot glue quite a bit. That really wasn't for structure. That is what would equivalently be a tack weld with steel tubing, where you just weld a very small area between two tubes just to hold it temporarily until you can weld all the way around. Then the wood gussets I used would be more equivalent to a full weld. I took a few photos along the way and let me use some of these photos to describe a little bit of what you saw in the time lapse. Now, as you saw early on in the video, I made some wood sticks out of just one board. I used a whole lot more than that. I used a lot of wooden sticks. But the reason it took a lot of boards is, as you saw in that video, there were some knots in some of the boards. Because the knots, the wood stick would break apart, wouldn't be strong enough, so I had to throw those away. So it took quite a few boards to get enough wooden sticks to build the frame. So for the flat parts of the builds was basically the lower longerons and upper longerons. I drew out on the table where the sticks had to go. I just used nails here just because it's quick and easy. I didn't need very much accuracy. So I didn't use the wood blocks or the little wooden cams that you've seen people use possibly. This is quick and easy. I was only making one of each of these. So this is just a little bit faster to do. Now I didn't show this part, which is building the rollover area on the airplane. I was doing a little bit experimenting to try to figure out how I wanted to put these gussets on here. I couldn't really nail them because of course the hot glue wouldn't really hold up to nailing. So I tried staples, I tried clamps, I tried a number of things. I ended up just using clamps. For the most part spring clamps, but a little bit later on you'll see I'm using some small C clamps too. Let me talk a little bit about the configuration of the design that I was thinking about to try to make building this just a little bit easier. And one example is with this rollover. I decided that I would make this rollover vertical 90 degrees to horizontal when we were in the cruise configuration because I knew it'd be a little bit easier to lay that up just with the big square when we were doing the building. So here you can see I put some standoffs on these upper longerons and I put that at the cruise configuration angle which is which is seven degrees from horizontal and with that in that orientation this rollover was vertical so it was easy to set up I didn't have to worry about the angle at all. And by the way, I didn't have to use a protractor or an adjustable angle anywhere in this build. I used horizontal and vertical measurements, a tape measure to do those, and a framer square. That's all I needed. Although it's kind of hard to see here, on the lower longerons, there's actually two sets. There's the front set and aft set. On the front set, you can see it laying on the table in its original spot where I built it. It's flat on the table. This rear one is also horizontal it's just not on the table it's up about nine and a half inches off the table so i intentionally made this aft laundron area at the same angle as a front laundron just to make building a little bit easier now it really didn't help on the top one i had to make a couple of standoffs and in fact i think you saw in this time lapse where i had made a mistake on this front standoff for the upper laundrons I'd made it too high, so when I went to support in the middle, the middle wasn't coming out right, so I had to go back and redo this front one, cut a little bit shorter. Now another thing I thought about doing, which would have made building a little bit easier, would be to make these top laundrons and the bottom laundrons at the same angle. Now I didn't do that because changing that angle would have either made this front too high, so I would have had a lot of frontal area, my instrument panel would have been higher, and so I would have had a little more difficulty seeing over that when I was landing, or it would have made this back area too low. Maybe saying too low isn't quite right, but I was a little concerned that the engine mount would have to be built a little stiffer, because right back here is where the engine mount is. I would have had it made a little stiffer and made a little heavier. I still may do it, I don't know. That's something I'm gonna to have to give some more consideration to. Oh, and in this video, you can actually see one of the experiments where I played around with stapling. I stapled this gusset on here, but I wasn't very happy. The staples really didn't go in very far and didn't hold very well, so I gave up on that idea. So here's the photo I used for the thumbnail for part one of this video. 
So I've taken off all the standoffs. So you can see it sitting here flat on the table. Now this isn't the cruise orientation. These bottom longerons would be at four degrees from horizontal in the cruise orientation. But I'm still doing a little bit of building on it. There's more to add for part three. And the things I need to add are a seat, a seat pan, a seat back. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. As you can see here, I'd already started on the next part where I've got this little bow in here for the instrument panel. So I got it attached on there now. I'm gonna put some little spots here to rest my heels when I'm sitting in here. Something I haven't done yet is I need to come back here and do some reinforcements. Now here at the end of the video, you saw me working on some reinforcements down here on each side in the center here on the bottom. And that is the hard points for the seat belt. So this one over here and this one over here for lap belt. This one here is for the crotch belt. And I still need to come back here at the back end and do reinforcements for the shoulder hard points. Now let's talk about some of the changes I would like to make. Something I wish I'd done a little bit differently early on if I'd thought of more about it. One is, and I mentioned this in the intro, this lower lounger on here. I realized that trying to climb in and out of this, it is not going to be strong enough. If I happen to step on that laundron, it will probably break. So what I've done here is I've added a quarter inch of height, so that'll make it a little bit stiffer vertically. So I think that'll be enough at least for the testing that I'm going to do. I probably need to do the same thing here on this top laundron because I'm gonna be lowering myself in here and putting my hands here. So a lot of weight will be here. So I'll probably have to make those just a little bit thicker here too, at least vertically. Another thing is here on the seat back. I used a single diagonal here for the brace here in this seat back area. Right here is where the back of the seat will be. It'll be a thin piece of plywood. And as I was building this, I should have made a change right then when I thought about it. But when I was building this, I realized that there's not going to be enough support for that thin piece of plywood. What I should have done is the same thing I did here on these braces down here, where it's symmetric about the center line. I should have done the same thing here, where they would have been out here near the seat belt attach points and then come up to this center spot here. That would have given me enough support for a thin piece of plywood there. I probably won't go ahead and make the change. I think I can go ahead and do my, the rest of my testing in part three without dealing with it, but it's gonna be a little bit annoying. Well, let me give you a shot at what it looks like right now. So this is what it looks like right at this moment. I've started with the seat area, so I got a little lower seat area. I've got an interesting idea of what I think I want to do for the seat. I'll talk about that a lot more in part three. I've got it setting here at the cruise attitude, so these lower longerons are now at three degrees from horizontal. This is roughly where the spar would be. Now that is not how tall the spar would be. You'd have to be down about here would be the lower part of the spar, and this would be the upper part of the spar. So it's coming along. I'm getting ready to do part three, where we're hopefully going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to be able to finally sit in the thing. I haven't done that yet. I want to get the seat done before I try to sit in it and possibly strengthen these upper longerons and put these little foot rest areas in here. And again, put in the reinforcement for the hard points for the shoulder harnesses back here. And then hopefully we're going to try a little rollover test. Well, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time.